Hello. Hello. Hello again. Good Hello. to see you. Great to see you all. And uh, just remind um, for those who are, if you have um, joined us uh, um, before seeing the, uh, without seeing the other the presentations. So um, uh, XJ or Xia Jian um, Jing Shen is here. She's uh, uh, the CEO and founder of VenturePol. Uh, we also have Hannah uh, Picasare, who uh, is works at Osango, and Sophie Rita from Yula Ramez. So, uh, absolute delight to have have you here. And uh, um, you know, what fascinating different perspectives each of you gave um, as to how digitization is is transforming or um, you know, uh, playing out in your in your very different industries. You represent different ages of of, of organization and experience, but in many ways, I, as a common theme, I think each of you is uh, looking at complex problems that involve not just technology, but humans and behaviors and cultures and ways of working and uh, playing out in, in traditional industries. Um, and, I, and I think it would be fair to say, XJ, that um, venture capital is still a, a, a traditional industry, <laughs> albeit the last 20 years has obviously changed its focus very much. but. I think many of the uh, behaviors perhaps that you're challenging are um, uh, ingrained in some more traditional models of people. Um, Hannah, you talked about the building construction industry and how uh, IT, how really people in that industry can be learning from um, ways and habits and norms that are kind of standard in IT. And Sophie, you've, you know, you at your MS have been um, creating, you know, been right in the center of, uh, you know, a major uh, second large, world's second largest in, uh, insurer uh, in part of their, you know, their transformation mm -hmm. over now, now a number of years. So I might ask um, each of you, you know, like, what have you personally, um, uh, you know, learnt through through the role that that that, that you have? I don't mind who who goes first. I, I wasn't going to do a sort of pass the mic. XJ, if you do want to speak, I think you're on mute. Um, uh, so would anybody like to go first? I can. Um, well, um, what I have learned, um, I learned a lot of things about the technology, of course, which is interesting. All these cloud native services are quite uh, interesting to discover. But more than that, I learned a lot about um, different management styles. And this is what I enjoy maybe most um, because this transformation is giving much more trust to the people that are actually owning these microservices for the company. And as they show the success of this roadmap, they also gained that trust of the board of management. And so there's a lot less control culture than when I started my career like 17 years ago here. And this is really, really nice to see. Very interesting, and and maybe Hannah, you could uh, share your observations as well. You talked about uh, yeah, I, I, I have to say that the the like the endless possibilities of like unused possibilities in the construction and data management in that that side. It's it's like it's it's wonderful and it's interesting, and all the support that I have got from the the teams and why that i've been working with that has been superb and uh, well it, it's like eye-opening when when you go from it to to ot world and there is all those things that you have been like facing 10 15 years ago and know that now you can learn from those uh, those steps that you took when you were working for IT and learn and teach and and like it's I hope it's like a fast track even though it <laughs> maybe can't be but still there is a lot to lot to learn and then also it might be an interesting point of view for example for insurance company a company's perspective to understand the the buildings like mm -hmm. systems inside those systems that are running the building because 
there are interesting in integrations and inter in interesting like combinations uh, that should be in should like should be set on the table and like read through. So lots of possibilities, and I'm so thrilled because of that. <laughs> And I, and I think this theme of um, a sort of purpose-driven um, background to for, for each of you in terms of how you're involved in what what you what you do comes through to me always very strongly. Um, Exeter, you you um, you've talked about solving a problem that you had. It's <laughs> how you introduced your your. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, you know what 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 maybe what you would say now to to an er, to a younger self or an earlier self. Um, when you were facing some of those problems from from what you see. Um, and then we we'll just remind the audience a little bit about VenturePoll um, if they missed the first talk to, to context. Okay. Yes. Um, so VenturePoll is an investment platform powered by AI. And we our mission is to make venture capital faster, better, and equitable. Um, and I think the most important lesson for me is actually failure, which is very counterintuitive in, in, in our industry. Um, but every time I get a, a no, I get in whether it be direct or indirect rejection uh, from, from investors, customers, um, or, or partners, it makes um, two things happen. And, and psychologically, it, it really uh, works out my perseverance grit muscle, if you will. And um, a management product um, development wise, it pushes us to go back to the drawing board and um, really focus on the essential values we're creating. And, um, and this is actually very helpful. Um, now, something that I would tell uh, a younger self would prob probably be that I, I don't think I can do what I do now um, if 15 years ago, if I was, if I was 25, I don't think I can do what, what I can do now. Um, because it takes a lot of entrepreneurship um, is a journey filled with everything but lollipops and sunshine. Um, and I don't think I ha I would have um, the necessary um, strength to do to do what I what I do now. So, so I'm actually very happy um, where I am and um, happy how life happened. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sophie, I mean, continuing that theme of um, really uh, having a product management mindset, uh, you know, Dexter is explaining to get you to really think about the deep purpose of where you start from. You, you shared in your talk about um, the uh, product ownership that you've now built into your model for managing um, lower levels of empowered decision making in your technology such business functionality. Mm -hmm. how, how does that how does something like you know within a microservices of a you know a large traditional insurance company, how do people find that connection with um, with their purpose, you know, with that with that purpose to bring to life a product owners. What are some of the things that you see? Well, I would say it um, it gives a lot of entrepreneurship to the teams because in the former times you would have some huge program with a lot of money and one man typically reporting to the board of management, hosting that program, and then directing downwards and giving orders what needs to be built. And that people, uh, they contribute then to this huge program and that's okay. But today they are really 
a small team owning something that creates direct value. So it's directly used by customers if they integrate directly via the API. It's important for the big programs. It gets, gets real visibility. And also in a way it um, will have to defend itself against other microservices in terms of getting the money and the resources that are needed to, to build something that is really uh, working. Um, so, so you're much more close to concrete value. Mm -hmm. And this is what I find very enriching, enriching for the teams that are working in this context. No, that, that, uh, thank you, Sophie. And I think um, I, I'd be interested, Hannah, you're, you and the team at Osango are involved in a lot of education and, um, and training people to, to, to embrace this kind of a, a mindset. What are some of the things that you help people you know, understand about that value and uh, what do you bring out for them, in, particularly in the operational technology uh, industries that you're interested and passionate about? Yeah, well, we we find like the uh, how do I say it? Um, we we kind of understand together the the uh, system environment. There is a lot to lot to describe and a lot to to analyze. So that's that's maybe the the most or I would say it's very valuable thing to understand the, the whole architecture and system environment, the dependencies, the consequences, the, the possibilities. And uh, like, as you saw the, the one slide where there was only the like tiny little part of the, the construction project, the fire alarm system and the the uh, smoke control system, and and that's that's a very small part, and but of course there's legal requirements, but then then the little part is integrated to many many other systems, and if you don't design it smartly, uh, th then it it. <laughs> It causes harm in your process because uh, I was I was just having a nice discussion with one one uh, consultant and he told me that now when we have been um, uh, involved in the smart building uh, projects and we have been able to uh, design the integrations, then I was like, okay. The integrations happen anyway, so they, these are. They, if you find only those buildings smart, where you are designing integrations, and then the others are like total disasters, <laughs> or, or they are not, of course, because there is, like, there is some rules, of course, to to complete those tasks, but still. Still, I would say that, uh, and actually, there is in in Finland, uh, there are these these uh, uh, um, how do you call it? Well, there are rules that nowadays you should have um, this somebody in the construction project that is taking care of all the integration integrations between all the all the systems so and and i talk about integrations because i've been in interesting discussions uh where where some sales person says that we have open apis and uh, you can just use them and of course they're documented and and uh, described and anything everything but then when you start using it, there is no documentation, no instructions, no, you have to pay more to like start using it to make the integration like 15, 10 years ago. So, so there is a lot to learn. And, and 
Now, I know with some this observation. I'm just wondering if there's a parallel with uh, you know um, if you're looking at large you know uh, portfolios of buildings that maybe they're a little bit like a lot of traditional organisations IT environments. You know you've got the smart new new uh, new non legacy buildings <laughs> that um, yeah. that have got all of the the hooks and the you know the, the technology capability being built, but in the portfolio there are also aged buildings that might have had layers and layers of uh, uh, construction over the top and maintenance, and um, they're very hard and and you know and and difficult to to maintain safety safely from a from an IT perspective. Interesting other analogy, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and the the building may look smart. They, they might may be like smart office systems, but the inside inside of the building, the the building automation and uh, uh, luminaries uh, control and so on, uh, they should also be like smartly uh, designed. Yeah. I think, and, it, yeah. Yeah. and as you said in your presentation, there are literally thousands of. API related opportunities in in this space. It's a, an that's enormously still still relatively untapped. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Like yeah. tens of thousands in one. Like <laughs> I, I can't imagine in in like bigger city. Now, I'm in Helsinki, so my average office building may be a bit smaller than in bigger cities. <laughs> so. <laughs> Very interesting. And I think, I mean, this this begs this question too about when you're undertaking complex um, problems, solving complex problems, and each of you talked about the complex problems you're dealing with, is how do you find the small thing to start with? Um, maybe XJ or Sophie, what, what do you, um, how, how do you start on some of the bigger bigger things? What, what, what process do you go through to... Um, uh, you are on mute, XJ. If you, yeah, there you go, great. Um, so, I, I think the principles of design thinking apply here, um, where uh, because we we as uh, product owners we're we're in love with our babies, um, and by using design thinking, we are not investing as much time and resource in the beginning, which is prototyping, we're, we're making, um, so we're, for example, like Sophie did, she just sketched on a piece of paper um, solution. And then, and then what we do is we test these um, lo-fi solutions with our customers and ask them for their feedback. And oftentimes we'll find that, well, actually what we're so much in love with, um, it's likely that nobody, want, want, nobody wants it. <laughs> Nobody's willing to pay for it. Then, then, then you go back to the drawing board and then, and then you, you, you really, it forces you to look at the problem more closely. Um, and this is very helpful. And yeah, I, I agree to that completely. Um, I must say also when when I started my career back then, um, there was no rapid prototyping, there was no MVP. This were things that we learned over time. Back then, there would be a strategic uh, project, uh, a business case um, to be calculated. I mean, mathematically calculated. And so if you have your idea, that you want to implement, then you will show as much as possible how good that is and how, how it fits to the business case. And it's only then after being developed, uh, it hits the reality and then the customer says, well, nice idea, but I have a different problem. And so the, this change of approach um, is extremely valuable. So we very early and, and yeah, it, it's like sketching on paper, going to see a couple of customers and discussing that openly with them and telling, okay, we have this idea. What do you think about that? Does this help your daily business? Is it any worth for you? And if they say yes, um, then mostly they have some ideas what we could add or do differently. And we, we can 
quickly even implement a, a proof of concept based on, on low code uh, technology and go back to them and say, okay, look at that, is that good? And they say, yes, oh, well, well not exactly. And so on, and you, you continuously improve the thing and you make it grow. And the result is of course, much more um, value oriented and much more than possibly valuable for our customers. Mm. And, and I think, you know, and those approaches, they take the courage, but also some humility about um, showing uh, a customer something before it's kind of completely, you know, sh showing the baby maybe that you, that you love before it's, you know, um, looking completely ready. Um, that, that I think is uh, the big opening up that, um, and, and having, you know, a diverse team of people coming up with the idea and, and, and processing that feedback and really probing, mm -hmm. you know, to the next day about probing the deep question um, below perhaps the initial kind of observation. Yeah. And there we go back to, to collaboration, which is much easier these days, because also back then we had our regional entities and in each region you would try to invent something great and then promote it and then you're, you're, you're good because you have this great invention. But it's much more productive to share early, you have the communities with your peers from other countries and challenge with them. And they have slightly different markets and they have very good ideas to, to make this more complete and much more valuable than for, for everybody in the end. Absolutely, indeed. Well, I can't believe it. We're nearly at time. I could um, chat about this stuff all, all <laughs> afternoon, but um, I, I wonder perhaps if you could uh, maybe just each take you know a minute and, and give some of your little thoughts and observations and maybe take outs um, from uh, not just the conversation we've had, but perhaps what you you observed from the from the others in the panel today. Um, anybody, Hannah, would you um, just like to quickly sum up um, uh, some takeouts for the audience? Well, um, uh, um, maybe something that has been uh, repeated, I would say, in many presentations, is that APIs are not a technical issue. So that's that's like the main point that should be understood. Great take out, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Hannah. Um, XJ, would you uh, like to uh, share any? Well, I've definitely um, learned from uh, my fellow panelists today. For example, like construction is an industry I, I really have no knowledge of. Um, although we work in, 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 I live in, uh, smart buildings, but I really don't know how it works. Um, it was really fun to like take a, a sneak peek, um, and, at, uh, at the back end. Um, so for, um, my industry, venture capital, um, I think, again, I will, um, I, I think, um, actionable, um, actions, uh, actionable um, items is important. So um, my tip for um, founders, female, diverse founders, f female founders, founders of color, uh, my advice is um, know that the reality is the majority of Czech writers, um, Czech writing investors are uh, middle-aged white men. Know that, but um, call, call them in. Don't call them out. Um, uh, elevate the call out, cancel culture. Let's call people in with actionable um, items. Let them know that, hey, um, be, be, be proactive. For example, female founders are often asked different questions than male founders. Male founders are, are asked, for example, um, how are you going to acquire new customers? Female founders are asked, how do you not lose your current customers? My advice is that answer with a proactive answer. 
tell them that, well, we're, we're doing this. We have this loyalty program to retain our current um, existing customers, but we are also, um, we're also doing these programs to outreach programs to acquire new customers. This would be my advice for, for new female founders and in, in founders of color. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Any, any quick parting words? Well, I would join um, Hannah in, in saying it's not about technology. It's uh, very much about collaboration. And in that, it's also um, in diversity because indeed the more ideas you get from different angles, and that means from different backgrounds, the better the quality will be of whatever you're doing, whatever you're developing. And just a, a very quick example, I have never seen anything about smart buildings and I watched the presentation of Hannah and, and she also says, hey, there's a lot of things uh, inside for insurance. And this is true because there's a tremendous amount of data that we could use to calculate risk and develop products on that basis. Mm -hmm. So it's the exchange of people from diverse, different angles that creates create creativity and mm -hmm. ultimately new value for people to use. Absolutely, and I think um, fantastic words to end on. A, a wonderfully diverse uh, um, group of, of interests with, uh, in fact, a lot of common common themes, which is, again, always the benefit of uh, um, opportunities and, and uh, conferences like this um, to increase networks. Thank you, each of you, for uh, um, your time this afternoon. It's been an absolute delight. Uh, and uh, thank you to the audience um, for your support and your great questions, and we look forward to um, seeing you all uh, soon. It's next, I should say, quick. You're now at a break and a great opportunity to go and visit the booths, uh, talk to um, uh, colleagues and, uh, and network more broadly. Thank you all. <laughs>